Hey, what's going on? We're live once again. It is Nate Mumford, Director of Sales Engineering here at RCS. I'm joined today by Scott Farr from RCS Canada. How's it going, Scott? It's going well, Nate. Thanks for inviting me. Always a pleasure to join you. Absolutely. And so today we have a really, really exciting topic. We're going to talk about Zeta and its hybrid workflows and format centers and just all these unique ways we can configure your Zeta system, really just catering it to your environment and your workflows. We're really excited to talk about this. Of course, don't forget our usual housekeeping. Don't forget to check on our backups, data exchanges, looking for beta users as always. Zeta 521.2, that's in beta right now, as well as G Selector 5.0. Looking for beta users for that. We're going to be at CRS. That's going to be the 23rd to 20, was it 24th, the end of February. So if you're going to be around for CRS, we'd love to see you. I'll be there. We'll answer questions, talk about any RCS product, uh, Zeta, G Selector, Acquira, Revma, RCS News, whatever you want. We'll talk about that at CRS at the end of February. Uh, and of course, we're also hiring as well an install engineer. So if you're looking to, uh, you know, work with a great, you know, people like Scott and myself, and we're looking for an install engineer, all the details on that are on our website, rcsworks.com, as well as an archive of all of our past videos, rcsworks.com slash rcs dash live. But let's dive right into it, Scott. Let's talk about some of these uh, enterprise, workflow, architecture, format, centers, so many words. So I'm going to throw it off to you. Go ahead. Excellent. Yeah. Well, basically, <laughs> I'd love to talk about uh, format center. And format center is basically what it is. It's an enterprise workflow. It's designed to increase the efficiency and the flexibility of ra radio program delivery. Mm -hmm. And again, a lot of words, but really what it's all about is how can we uh, create new workflows, advanced workflows, that can help us deliver our programming and our product in, in more efficient ways. So one of the core foundations to uh, Format Center is basically what I refer to as a publisher and a subscriber workflow. The publisher is the contributor. They are the format captains. They manage the format, they create the audio content, uh, they put, the, put together the programming and the daily schedules. The subscriber is the radio station they are the recipient of the audio content, the programming, and the schedules created by the format captain. And just for um, clarity, and, and uh, a format is a virtual station assignment for the grouping of content and music schedules. So important to remember what I refer to a format, that's what I'm talking about, is the, all the audio and the content that would go in to create a station. The publisher, contributor, uh, basically provides the content, uh, which is the audio and the metadata. They are the format captain. Um, formats are based on genres. We talk about a variety of different genres that are popular in mm -hmm. radio today. We talk about hot AC, we talk about classic rock, we talk about top 40, and that's what we would refer to when we're talking about the various different genre formats that would be there. I've heard of hundreds of others. There's Peggy and Bob oh, yeah. and Hank. <laughs> goat and my goodness you'd be sub surprised. formats some of, of all those absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> some of the names i've heard but that's whatever you classify a format as or whatever your branding would be that's what we're referring to mm -hmm. so you need a music library you need somebody to manage that music library that's associated mm -hmm. with that format and somebody has to create the branding that's associated with that format as well so you are listening Two, you know, classic rock, 101.5. Somebody has to produce that content so that it, it melds in and meshes with uh, your format um, delivery. So it's got to go together with your music. It's got to go together with your brand. And, of course, that involves audio production. And the wonderful thing is that it does extremely well. Yes. And programming and the schedules. So somebody's got to generate the daily schedules, which are made up of various different day parts. And why that's important, we're going to talk about it in a couple of mm -hmm. seconds. But every daily schedule is made up of multiple day parts. And also another piece of the puzzle for uh, the, the, what the contributor or the publisher can do is do what I call enterprise syndication. And again, I'm taking the term syndication in in and talking about it from an enterprise perspective. So within your organization, you may want to deliver your program in a variety of different ways. You may want to deliver it as both schedules and content, which 
everybody could play out at their local individual stations. Or you may want to do live automated program delivery right from your format center. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in more detail as well. And again, so, just, yeah, so, sorry, Scott, go ahead, please. I was just going to say, just, just for clarity, a format captain is responsible for the content and the scheduling for each format. Yeah. Sorry, Nate. No, no, it's all good. And I think this is kind of a very important slide because this is kind of what we're talking about in regards to the origin of everything, right? Not just the roles, but where they're coming from. So as the publisher's perspective, they're the ones that's creating the schedule. Now, how do we have a schedule? We have brand new music, right? Or sweepers or promotions, wherever it may be. and um, Or promos, I should say. And we're taking those elements and we're essentially having the schedule. We have the audio, the metadata. And then, of course, we have a unique type of enterprise syndication or program delivery, like a morning show that we want to send across to multiple subscribers or affiliates, however you want to define those. But this is important because we're talking about the format center. We're talking about the origin, right? This is how we're creating it. And now we're going to talk about how to deliver all of those elements. Absolutely. And probably one more helper I should have put on here is, is this, when we talk about workflows. And workflows are basically um, pieces of the puzzle yeah. um, that are involved. You know, we, we obviously need, we need roles. We need somebody who's responsible for these various different workflows. And then we need the mechanics behind what does that workflow mean. So there's another terminology we should talk about. <laughs> when we talk about workflow, we're talking about people and process. Yes. So let's talk about the subscriber. This is the radio station that would receive mm -hmm. uh, the content from the publisher. So the content is basically the audio, the music. It's the format and the branding that's associated with that format. And it's also the programming, the daily schedules, and the various different day parts that make up those daily schedules. And of course, the, the enterprise syndication, the program delivery, as we talk about it, it can be delivered as both schedules and content, and again, we can deliver it as live or automated program delivery using our Zeta splits. So stations, they can subscribe for the content and the scheduling for any format. And I think that's the important thing about when we talk about this workflow is that we can share this content um, to, we can share this, uh, these format, content formats to a variety of different stations and a station basically has to subscribe and they can have any one of those formats that would be available. You could have more than one. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get into that right away as well. So let's talk about the content management. Zeta is the foundation for the content management, and that's basically how we ingest our audio. And audio could be ingested within, with Zeta in a variety of different ways, and a very powerful tool for uh, getting your audio into the platform. So we can do auto load drop folders. We can do uh, direct imports. We can do a CD rip. Yeah, people still rip CDs. I'm one of them. <laughs> um, we can do multi-track recordings. But I think another important thing to note too is that when Zeta stores the audio, mm. once we, we ingest it, we can put it in multiple locations automatically. And so typically what we would see here is like a primary and a secondary storage location. Yeah. If you have NASs and things like that at your facilities, it would automatically put it onto the primary server and then maybe on your backup NAS. And I yeah. think that's important to say because uh, Zeta recognizes that we both have a primary and a secondary or even a tertiary storage system. And we can recognize it immediately should we ever lose one of those things. So yeah. an important note, another conversation for another day perhaps, but uh, I well, thought it would be important to well, say here. Absolutely, Scott. As, as a centralized location, I mean, you're talking about, you know, you have all of your audio in one location. If that audio store goes, goes down, you know, you have a secondary audio store tied to your central location. So you have the primary, the secondary in one location, then distribute that content to the local copy. You're just having multiple points of redundancy, which is engineers, we love to hear. So keep going. Absolutely. And again, distribution is the next key element here. So how do we get all this audio that we've created uh, out to the individual stations? And we use Zcast. Zcast is a a very flexible and very powerful way of, of distributing audio within the uh, within the Zeta Zeta platform, and of course we talk about it again. I keep talking about it. You know, is the live split playout, and again, we'll 
get into a little bit more detail on that. But I think it's important to note that once we have our format centers, we can utilize those format centers in a variety of unique uh, ways that continue to add benefit and I guess efficiency to the way that we want to distribute you know, that specific content. Yep. And one last thing we'll mention too on that Zcast portion. You're good. You can leave it on here, Scott. But in regards to the Zcast, I always tell users, think of it as like a you need this audio or I am allowed to receive this audio, so I'm requesting it. So that's the idea there. We're sending the audio, which comes with the metadata or the schedules or the voice tracks, whatever that may be. So that's one of the functions we're talking about in regards to Zcast, which, by the way, is a Zeta RCS service. It's all built in, right? It's not external. It's all built in. Important to note for that whole process. Go ahead, Scott. Absolutely. And, and the other side of the puzzle here is the programming and the scheduling. Um, so. We use G Selector, mm -hmm. and G Selector basically provides us, once we ingest our audio into our platform and we put it into our audio store, um, basically we then can groom that. And that's the metadata grooming that I'm referring to here, is that basically we can make sure the title and the artist information is correct. We can give it an assignment in terms of what format it is. And again, when I say that is I'll bring in a classic rock song, I'll put it into my classic rock category. I'll bring in a top 40 song, I'll put mm -hmm. it into my top 40 format. So they that's the example. To. Yeah. Exactly. And again, the coding, coding is, is important. How do we want to actually present our pieces of audio? Um, you know, in Canada, we have, you know, an important piece of coding called CanCon, Canadian content. Mm -hmm. So we definitely want to identify, you know, our Canadian content. And of course, how you code it for scheduling, that becomes then another um, another uh, way that we can uh, manage the metadata within G Selector with the associated audio that we've we've um, we've ingested in Zeta. And of course, here's where we got to set up our format clocks. We got to generate our daily schedules. And again, the enterprise shared database that we have in both G Selector and Zeta is a foundation for the format center. That way, we have access to all of the content and all of the programming that's associated. <clears throat> with each of the, uh, of the um, various different pieces of content Absolutely. that we would have. Yep. And, and it's important to note, when you have this publisher, you can have multiple publishers as well. So you can have different locations if you wanted to have that too. Absolutely. And I know we're going to talk a little bit more about that too. Mm -hmm. when, we, when we start talking about the Format Center as a workflow, um, that's not necessarily forcing us to have it into a single yeah. dedicated location. We can have we can have this on multiple locations. And I think that's an important. Um, it's almost like a hybrid workflow, Scott. <laughs> isn't that funny? <laughs> All right, keep going. Absolutely. No, we can move it around. All right, so let's talk about schedule and, and audio content delivery. And it's all about Zcast that you were talking about earlier. It's, this is an extremely powerful tool where we can share audio content, voice tracks, hotkeys, mm. all the things that would be associated with that format uniquely. And when I say, um, Hotkeys in this example is that even we may take the we may subscribe to the classic rock format, but there may be all kinds of interesting sounders and IDs and sweeps and things like that that we want to make sure that when people are broadcasting it live from their individual station, they have access to all of that augmentation, all of that various different uh, branding that we would have associated with that format. And by the way, it's important to note the you can have all of these or some of these, right? You can get in theory a piece of audio with metadata or a voice track or a schedule or a hotkey or everything. They are isolated in the Zeta environment. I should point that out. That's right. It's 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 a self-serve menu. Yeah, we take that for granted, isn't... of course. But yes, there are ways like so for example, and they're also individual. So you can do certain things like if ever I add a piece of audio, you automatically get it. But typically with a format center, we like to do a little bit of a manual push so that we say like, you know, Scott needs this, Scott's going to get this. Absolutely. And again, the Zcast, you know, is, there are, we have multiple ways of distributing uh, on the platform, you know, site replication included. But Zcast, when it comes to the format center, is a perfect fit in terms of we can pick and choose as a, as a subscriber and pick and choose as a publisher as to what we want to share and receive. Yep. So music scheduling is done with G Selector, mm -hmm. and those schedules are sent out um, to the individual stations, and the audio is sent out via uh, the format center. So the Zcast would send the audio to the target cluster, the associated station with that, and the schedules would be available on G Selector. And again, 
the Zcast is the flexible enterprise content and, and data distribution service that makes the format center work. Mm. Keyword there is flexible. It's flexible. <laughs> this is my role here, Scott. I just, you get all the good stuff and I come in and go, yep, that's what Scott said. <laughs> Do the color. Do yeah. the color. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about S3, Schedule Subscription Service. And, and Nate, this is one of your areas of expertise and, and one of my favorite stories is that basically it's, it's, a, it's a way that we can get all the station and the day parting information individually to each of the individual stations. So it means we can have multiple publishers or format centers um, and, and handling various different formats. Mm -hmm. And we could then you know, send out that information or make that information available to the stations on a subscription basis. And we can do it on a trust level as well. And we can get deeper into this. You, got, you have done some marvelous sessions on S3. So I'm just going to touch on what I consider to be some of the interesting parts of that um, and how it would relate to the format center. And one of them is the trust level. And the trust level is basically where I can set up when I'm sharing my various different day parts within my format. I can say, these are some of the things which you can touch at an individual station basis, mm -hmm. and these are things you cannot touch. So this song, this sweep, whatever, this is untouchable. This song, this sweep is touchable. So yeah. you can actually change that at a local level. If so only there was a past level. video somewhere in an archive, Scott, called rcsworks.com slash rcs-live, when you can view past videos of S3 with further descriptions. Oh, wait, there it is. <laughs> Uh, oh, and wait, by the way, yeah. yeah, it's position by position when the, when Scott's saying these trust levels, you know, obviously we're talking about flexibility. So we kind of say, is it a day part? Is it a position? Is it a specific hour? We can customize all of that. Absolutely. And there could be certain overrides that are Absolutely, as well. Yeah. And so again, we can get into a tremendous amount of detail on that, but I think these are the key components that I were looking at from the format center some of the controls that you can apply. So you can basically open the whole darn thing up and allow them to change anything they want, um, or you can lock it down to say you can change these elements or you can't change any elements. You have that power as the format captain mm. mastering the format. Again, that publisher-subscriber relationship. I'm the publisher. You are subscribing to what I'm telling you you're allowed to get. And then, of course, the trust level overrides all come into play. Exactly. So again, anytime I would change that as a format captain at my format center, um, all of those schedules, anything I would change would be automatically updated to you, the subscriber station. And cool. there's an audit in here as well, so I can see what's been going on as a format captain. Nice. And let's, yeah, let's go to the next step the bigger picture of this. So again, the S3, the idea is that you have one publisher with a master log that gets sent to a subscriber, which is an affiliate or the local station, and we define what they're going to receive. So there could be something like, I'm going to take an overnight and it's a full clock structure. So I get everything from songs to sweepers to voice track positions, whatever it may be, versus a local clock which could go and say, I'm going to have my local clock structure for the AM drive, afternoon and PM drive. And that includes a, a breakdown position by position. So all my sweepers and clocks and traffic and all that is local, but my music positions are overwritten by that of the publisher. Absolutely. And again, the, you know, overnights are, is an easy subscription. Evenings yeah. is an easy subscription. When we start talking about drives, <laughs> we become a little bit more complex as to how we're going to organize. I feel so but mean, again, Scott, because I keep talking, I, I talk uh, badly about evenings and overnights and all these RCS lives. My past videos, I was like, ah, overnights, who cares about overnights? But, but yeah, <laughs> the, idea, the idea is maximize your time and energy. And let's be honest, let's call a spade a spade here. AM drive, afternoon, PM drive. Those are our primary day parts. But what Scott is saying is, and going back, by the way, to his distribution point about Zeta splits, you might have an S3 profile where you're taking full clock overnight. You're taking local clocks with music override positions for afternoon, PM drive, and evenings. But the AM drive, you have some you know, uh, Zeta splits where you're taking either an audio route or a morning show originating from a format center. 
Absolutely. And I think when we talk about these, and I don't want to get overly complex here, but we all know that our AM and PM drives are a little bit more complex. We have a lot more localization mm -hmm. going on. Yeah. We have uh, most of our commercial loads. Um, so there's a lot more complexity in that. So when we share that, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're sharing everything. We're not necessarily if suggesting that, you know, the format captain setting. drives everything. <laughs> if only it was a setting and configuration inside of G Selectors S3 that will completely cater this to whatever you need it to be. And that's what we're trying to convey here. And there is. And there is. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. So, again, you know, we can set up a degrees of complexity and replaceability mm -hmm. as as required by the individual stations and as required by the individual operators of the network. So whatever you decide that you need to have accomplished, uh, to what you need to accomplish, we can accommodate in a variety of different and unique ways. But uh, let's not get too far in the weeds because that makes these really entertaining sessions yeah. a little bit more yawning. And, and, <laughs> so, and if, if talk about this slide here in particular, Scott, talking about the programming aspect, that's kind of where we're, we're here right now, right? The programming of what you're choosing to do. And as an administrator, Absolutely. there's a lot of great things you can do with G Selectors S3, Zcast. And so what you can do is you can essentially have different day parts, right? So in different formats. Um, now you hear, you see your classic rock AC and country where the classic rock goes the overnight, but then the subscriber also gets AC for the rest of AM drive, afternoon, PM drive, returning back to classic rock during evenings. Now, typically, yeah, we're not going to switch from, you know, a top 40 station to a country station per se. But if you look at the, uh, the AC format, a soft AC versus an AC versus a hot AC, you, what you might do is you'll have three different types of publishers in G Selector of all three of those formats. And then the subscriber Absolutely. during the overnight and nights might get the hot AC. And then for the AM drive to the PM drive, they might get maybe a soft AC. Those are things you can Absolutely. do inside of uh, G Selector's S3. Absolutely. And at 5,000 feet, the, the, what I'm trying to uh, represent here is that you know, we may, as a station, we may have a different audience in our evenings and our overnights mm -hmm. than we have during the day. Um, and so you can actually subscribe to different formats to cater to your audience and based on your day part. And it Powerful does, tool. Yeah. Uh, so it does go back to the point, too, Scott, where you, you're not really restricted in regard to publishers, too. So you can have that if you want to have four different versions of hot AC, do it. Go ahead. You have the format captains. Why not? And again, absolutely. Yep. And we're talking about when we have G selector here in the S3, we're talking about the schedule getting from the publisher to the subscriber. And if we have new audio, that's where the Zeta Z cast comes into play because we have those, you know, station content subscriptions. So obviously we have a, a, a subscribing thing in the Zcast world where I am part of the Zeta Hot AC world. We have added a new Hot AC song. I'm going to Zcast you the audio. And then when you schedule the G Spectre log, we're going to match up on that new audio. And we have that asset in our local database. Also important to note for format switching too, because if you have, let's say, multiple formats in there, um, and you want to, on a Monday, your classic rock, and you're going to launch a brand new top 40 on Sunday. Well, what you do is you just take that library from the format center in Zeta, you Zcast the brand new library over. And from G Selector's perspective, you just change the profile starting Sunday. And then boom, you got a format flip and it takes like minutes. It's super, super easy. Well, indeed. And, you know, when you, when you look at this as well, and you can say, well, all right, my afternoons are my potential experiments. <laughs> so if in fact I've got a whole new format I've created from somewhere and one of the geniuses in our, in our, um, in our, our, our cluster, our, 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 our enterprise and our group have said, we've got a whole new format. We'd like to test out in the afternoon. Great, subscribe to it. With Zcast, you'll get all the audio and with S3, you'll get all of the scheduling that you'll require and you just be able to say, great, I'm gonna try Format Z in the afternoon, mm -hmm. Format Z for you, America. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use Format Z uh, in the afternoons. I want to experiment with it and see what it has. So it can be that fast. You can say, great, tomorrow afternoon, we're going to test the new format you know, in this market. And uh, we're just going to see what the yeah, audience responds absolutely. to. It can be that simple it's and that, that powerful. Absolutely. And so I think that's a really important note there is we'll get all of the programming, we'll get all of the content, and we'll be able to switch it 
just like that. So let's talk about the enterprise program syndication. Uh, and this is basically the ability to be able to do a split feed to various different marketplaces. So this is where I can have a live or an automated program directly out of my format center, hosted from the format center. So the network hosts broadcasts the program to the receiving stations. And again, this is all based on your network audio routing capability, but I can do a live broadcast mm. right from my, from my format center. And if, that were my, if that's where my talent happens to be, and that's where I want to do a live show, uh, this architecture will allow us to be able to do that. So we can talk about you know, split feeds in more mm. detail, and you've done some great presentations on it already. But the nice thing to know is that we can support um, the localization through the splits, and we know exactly when to join and rejoin. I mean, it's yeah. all programmed it's by all a TCP, so it's real time. We don't have to worry about those old, old yeah. school uh, right. subaudible tones and receivers of tones and all those things. Is that we know exactly when we need to break away and how long we need to break away. So therefore, we can. And, and, we, we and for time purposes, for yeah. And for time purposes, and Scott, we're gonna play a game. If only there was a delightful you know, RCS Canadian sales representative or your local sales representative to answer all these questions for you in a more elaborate tone that pertains to your specific situation. We're obviously here to help out. And Scott is very knowledgeable on this too. So if you have questions about, you mentioned this, how would this work? We can totally help you out and talk more about those Zeta splits. Absolutely. So I'd love to talk about that more. Just uh, reach out to me at any time. So Basically, and again, I'm going to turn this over to you for this, Nate, but mm -hmm. what we're really saying is that this is a workflow that overlays on top of our traditional configurations. Yeah, uh, and I always I always told Scott, I wanted to include this in this presentation because I, I love the way the concept works here, right? So this is a typical Zeta cluster, right? You might have a Zeta server, you might have maybe a Quira server or a Gslifter server or a production server or an on-air sequencer machine or just a control playout. It doesn't matter. Also note the Zeta to go, which is very important for your average typical cluster. But again, this is just your average one, right? So if you click again, then we start talking about, well, we take that typical cluster, which is the station one, station two, station three, so on and so forth and the main cluster facility, and the regional cluster facility, and we build up on that. So when you're talking about budgeting, and you have, let's say, a, a hierarchy of sites, you know, we all have them. There's primary sites, secondary sites, and kind of affiliate sites that are in there. As an engineer or as an administrator, you can start to really customize that budget. So you have that main cluster facility. Could be a format center, could be a main cluster. It's up to you. We have that same hardware configuration, but maybe we have more stations, beefier hardware, whatever that may be. And then you have kind of a, a hierarchy there of how you define that hardware from most important to least important sites. But the idea here, as you can see, we take that typical traditional Zeta environment and we start connecting it using Zeta site replication, which is a we, you're 100% in sync, or as we've been talking about for the format center example, the Zcast. And as Scott was saying, you know, you might have a morning show for those Zeta splits. They may, may be housed at a regional cluster facility. We'll take that as the Zeta split host. And then, of course, distribute it across the board. Or maybe you have a format captain, a great talent, but they're in a smaller market for right now. Well, then utilize, you know, your domain and your network and Zeta to go and have them connect to remote in and, and achieve those, you know, schedules, audio, voice track, whatever they may be, you know, utilize that staff and share it across the network. So what we're doing here in this one graph is we're taking everything, that typical Zeta site, and we're just connecting the dots across the board. Absolutely. When we're talking about the format center, we are talking about a virtual workflow. Mm -hmm. and I think that's the important thing. And where that virtual workflow exists in this map is anywhere you choose it to be. Absolutely. Um, all right. Uh, to summarize, Scott? Well, basically, the format center provides multiple ways of sharing your programming and content. So we can centralize the content and production and distribution. We can centralize the creation of your schedules. We can utilize S3 to distribute those schedules. We can use Zcast to distribute the content. We can do both live and automated programming uh, 
to the enterprise from your format center. And we can also decentralize that to any degree that it makes sense to you as an organization. Zeta and G-Selector provide all the foundational building blocks for any advanced workflow um, design that we will come up with. And, you know, I thank you for spending a few minutes with me today and uh, listening to us uh, regarding Format Center and how that could be an advanced workflow that could help you save some time and money. Helpful resources, of course, rcswork.com slash rcs-live. That's our archive for past videos. We have videos on S3, Zcast, all that stuff. And of course, as Scott was saying, you know, utilize Scott's wealth information or your local RCS sales representative. Uh, we are here to help out. And, uh, you know, because again, you can see here, there's a lot of pieces here. And hopefully this should kind of get those gears turning to think, wait a second, can I go and do this, take that site and connect that site? Can I take that HD2 and send the audio and schedules to that other market's HD2? Absolutely you can. So we're definitely here to help. Of course, if you have any questions, we are, as I said here, and there's Scott's email and all that good stuff. So Scott, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us and welcome to the RCS Live. Thank you, Nate, and thank you, everyone, who joined. Um, look forward to... Uh to our next one, Nate. Absolutely, anytime. So of course, rcsworks.com slash rcs-live here every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern. It's RCS Live. For Scott, I am Nate. We'll see you next week. Have a great one. Bye-bye.